Welcome back to the StarCraft II World Championships, the quarterfinals of Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2023. I give you the rank one Terran player in the world. It's the man, the myth, the Maru. Up against the perpetually underrated, never imitated, and somewhat occasionally devastated Zerg player, Solar. Known for his weakness to nuclear missiles, and honestly not too much else. He's just very solid, but not quite solid enough recently to break through. Maybe this is his opportunity. A best of five, Terran versus Zerg battle. Who moves on? Who moves out? We find out now. First Reaper, the most exciting. Will he kill a drone? Probably not. A Ling, slightly more likely. Most importantly, we'll scout for an early Roach Warren and then uh, build two command centers because it's Maru. So it's one or the other. Two barracks or two command centers. Those are your two options for the early game. What he follows up with? Honestly, TBD. He's been trying mech. Uh, but most of the time it's still marine tank into if you're no god the queens are so jealous of all the birds on this map there are a lot of critters but they so many times we've seen those queens kill the birds they just get jealous because the queens remember a time when they could fly uh, but it's been many years not since the war okay so back at home twilight not twilight council i don't know i was <laughs> too much protoss uh raven on the way tech lab wow how did i go from tech lab to twilight Con kind of the same purpose but still wow quite a jump there nine drones on the way for solar it's going to be a macro game all right settle in there is no... Okay, the Raven is worth pointing out, though. I, I got so distracted by my own ineptitude that I, I neglected to point out the Raven is definitely an oddity. Usually, either Banshee or Viking is your start. Occasionally, Liberator. But Raven, despite the changes, the cheaper Raven, though uh, a little bit nerfed auto turret, as well as anti-armor missile, the cheaper Raven still has not seen too much use as an opener as uh, it is vulnerable to the same things many early game units are in, in this matchup, which is, of course, Queens. Um, but Maru testing out here in game one. Gonna give it a shot to slap down the auto turn of the back line. We got double NG Bay now. Maru, this is full Terran at the moment. He's got his Raven early, following up with a Liberator. He is confident that Solar is not even gonna think about attacking until like seven eight minutes here's the thing he's pretty much right uh, he has correctly recognized or predicted that solar's going to be sitting back defending for now though he's adding on three more gases did he get two evos no oh my god is it mutas because uh that is a lot of gas for someone without evolution chambers to be going for Mutalist not seen too often, as they are quite vulnerable and, and very hard to find damage if your opponent expects them or is prepared for them, uh, as economies are just so high. But there's the Spire. Hmm, well, Spire on the way. It's going to be Mutas. Uh, same thing, though. Maru is not going to have ah, the ultimate dance. Spore Crawler unburrows. Liberator unsieges. Spore Crawler reburrows. Liberator re unsieges again. Uh, the most clunky dance. Wait, but this time it looks like the Spore is able to pre up the Liberator. And Maru, a bit of a mistake there, ends up losing it. For Still very annoying, but not particularly much damage. 71 workers to 60 SCVs, but Maru, of course, has those mules to work with, as you can see by the mule canyons uh, you find here in the income tab. Auto turret as well. Precludes the need for as many scans if you're able to keep it alive. Does provide that detection, but 
Eh. Keeping control of the creep always has been an incredibly important part of Terran vs. Zerg. You can kind of tell how well the game's going for Zerg by the creep spread. The creep spread was nerfed slightly in the previous patch, a little less vision, and a little longer cooldown between spreading the creep tumors. Um, overall, it's still a very good indicator of how much map control the Zerg has been able to keep. And you know who the best player is at denying map control? Well, on the screen right now. Does he know about the spire? Does he suspect it? He didn't see it. it. It is definitely something he could at least predict, especially based on the lack of aggression from Solar. Does he have a turret? He hasn't built any turrets. 12 mutas are on the way. He's hiding them so far. It looks like he may be able to sneak up on the main. And if there are no turrets and he can defend the natural, the main link speed is done, but no other upgrades. These are 1 1 Marines with a tank on the back line. So, the Mutas could do a lot of economic damage, but Maru is already getting aggressive. Yep, Mutas completely blindsiding Maru. Did not expect them one bit. So, this time around, the Mutas find plenty of damage. It doesn't have CVs so far. Will Maru come all the way home, or is he going to rotate around for another stab at uh, an attack here? Mutas come into the third. Undefended. There's another command center over there he can delay. Just no turrets at all. He came all the way back home. This is the best case scenario by far for the Mutalisks. The most damage I've seen Mutas do, maybe all year. <laughs> now, we do see the recurring issue with Mutas, though. Maru lost 20 SCVs. It doesn't seem to have cut into his production much, if at all. He's still at 155 supply. He's got plus one, plus one against no upgrades. This is still a deadly army coming across the map. And fighting this army is immensely difficult with good upgrades. So the tanks are going to siege up here. The creep is starting to recede. Solar definitely wants to go before them, but he has plus one carapace to wait for. That's just so much army supply. The mute is on the back. Looking, the Baitling's rolling through. Anti-armor missile, Widow Mine connects. Marines stand their ground. And those Lings and Banes are thinning out. Solar tries to pull back, but then realizes that option is not available. The Mutas softened up and cut down throughout the fight. And the Marines just tearing through everything else. Maru with a clean cut attack in game one. Shows those Mutas that maybe they belonged in a different expansion pack as uh, despite the sheer amount of damage they were able to do, they're just not going to be able to fight the army. And the amount of uh, solar cut out upgrades, and to some extent, he, he cut out his hatcheries, as he was not able to hold on to the outlying hatcheries because he was saving up for the mutas. He didn't have the, the, the early upgrades uh, or the units in general. So Maru kind of did economic damage by preventing those things to start. But we're going into Gresvin, which is your macro map. Yours and everyone else's, as uh, it is the most popular. We'll see. I, I don't mind it. Game one, you try out the mutas. Maybe you get inordinate damage. All you have to do really is defend the counterattack, but that's the hard part, right? Will Solar try the, the Roach style here on Gresvin? Which has become popular throughout the course of IEM? Or are we going to see a more standard Queenling Bane? Maru, is he going Reapers? <laughs> All right. Two racks and counting. I can't imagine this is anything but Reapers. Like, if it was Beyond, I'd say, oh, he's doing Reapers, but I'm still leaving the options open for Mara. No, it's 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 definitely Reapers. Wow. No third racks yet. So, an economic Reaper play? Yeah, two racks reaper. Whoa, so so measured, so uh, 
middle of the road. Yeah, three racks Reaper means you can't expand nearly as quickly, but you can put you can get so many Reapers so quickly that you can start to fight the Queens. Two racks Reaper is more denying the third base, forcing out Zerglings. It shouldn't be a potentially deadly amount. I thought we... How many times do we have to nerf this unit, old man? I don't... We saw Beyond using this as well, like... Beyond got it nerfed twice, and here we are, in 2023, still going Mass Reaper. <laughs> Solar's got six on the way. He saw... He saw the barracks. He's thinking about a third. Do you commit to it? He doesn't know if there's... Did he see the command center start? He didn't. He can't know right now whether or not there's a third Rax. And that third Rax, both in proxy and in three Rax Reaper, or early Reaper, makes a lot of difference in how you respond to this. Two Rax Reaper, you zone out, go Zergling speed. Three Rax, maybe a Roach Warren. So, Solar hedging his bets. He goes for the third. Invest in speed. Of course, queens and creep spread going to be very important. Mario just made threepers. That's it. And then he's done. Which, enough to two shot lengths. And potentially, on their own, they can easily kill a queen, especially with grenades. A little bit of juggling. A little bit of micro has never intimidated Mario. Oh, not this. Did you know flying barracks are faster than overlords? I mean, I, I guess a big-ass jet engine should be faster than uh, a heavily tentacled balloon, but... A little embarrassing for the overlords, in my opinion. He, he went to the other pervert pillar, which apparently exists. I've never seen that one used. Well, Reapers just kind of get in, get a drone that was, for some reason, left out. On the other side, well, now this is the downside. This is RNG in StarCraft. Maru is on the side of the map where your add-ons are exposed. Because you can't put your add-ons on a different side here. Which I believe the Observer is pointing out right now. Uh, because it must be spoken of. Because if the positions were reversed... Then, of course, Maru could have gotten his tech lab and his reactor up uh, with impunity there. Yeah, stim pack looking mighty vulnerable right now. Of course, he could have pulled the barracks back to the main or something and walled off with depots, NG bay, whatever, but um, Maru not to be put off that easily. Third command center is on the way. Bit of an odd start, but I think Solar handled it really well. He didn't get intimidated by the Reapers. He got his third on time, got Zergling speed, and he's up to 48 drops. And Maru delayed his third command center in order to get all this. Usually, you have three command centers that early on. You have more than enough economy to compete with the Zerg. But right now, Solar has a distinct uh, production advantage because he's already had that third hatch up, and Maru is still building up his infrastructure. He still has to build up the racks. What am I watching? Mario, wake up! Wait, what's in there? Hellions. Okay. I, I, that was weird. Not used to seeing Mario just lose units. Um, looks like we're gonna see a little more of it here. Yeah, wow. This went very poorly. So Mario just lost everything. What? Cure, hand back the controller. What are you doing? Get off the stage! Got knocked out in the group stage. I'm just... Uh, Alright, well, Maru, now that he's done cutting out all those silly units that aren't Marines, get, starts building the real ones. He's got mines, medevacs, and Marines. That was kind of uncharacteristically and incredibly awkward, but he just... That was one of the worst drops I've ever seen out of Maru. He just lost it. It was super obvious, too. He should have known. This is not nearly enough. They don't have combat shield. There's still plenty of queens. It wasn't even two full medevacs here, so... Very impotent drop. 
Maru feels like he got off on the wrong foot on this game. And now Solar. The one thing Maru has is the upgrades. Um, he's got 1-1 one, one about a little over a minute quicker. Well over a minute quicker. Hydraling Bane is going to be the choice. I think a smart move from Solar to shift away from the Mutas more towards the ground-based units. Especially now that he has four comfortable hatcheries. Combat shield is still pretty long way off. We got some zoning spore crawlers for the main. Small zergling counterattack slows things down. Baneling speed about to complete. Very important for dealing with this. Combat shield not done yet until it is. Can be very careful with the marines. They're one baneling away from dying if they don't get healed. After stim, of course. Still a dangerous army. Some widow mines in there. The queens getting gunned down rather quick. Widow Mines? Eh, not great. And Maru drops right into the main. That's still a bunch of 1-1 one -one Marines. How many Banelings on the map? A dozen. Took their time rolling up here, but here they are. Even killed an Extractor. Spore Crawler? Not gonna be nearly enough on the way out. Very annoying for Solar, but despite the superficial damage there, I think nothing that's really gonna hurt him much in the long term. Maru needed to get something, otherwise Solar was about to grow out of control. As he's already pushing at 80 drums, the creep spread, starting to extend further out. I wouldn't be surprised to see an infestation pit momentarily, and head towards potentially Hive and Lurkers as well. Um, as this is a comfortable economy in production, especially once 1-1 one -one is done for Solar. And drop heading towards the main again. There's another drop over to the right flank. Widow Mines. Oh, no. A dozen drones. Gone. But we're not done. But wait, there's more. Very dog in the mine a bit. Looking for a better opportunity. Doesn't get much. Goes into the extractor. Loses the medevac. But Solo lost a dozen drones. And damage is starting to add up here as the supplies get a lot closer to even. Infestation Pit is on the way. You can't let Maru get too much momentum. I'd love to see a counterattack or two. Something to keep Maru on his toes back at home. Before he starts really being able to focus on Solar's side of the map. But here he is. 2-2. Two -two. Almost done already. Bellings, Banes. Widow Mines taking some pretty big chunks, but the Banelings doing so as well. Another drop in the center. Finds a few units. Plus two attack. Finishes up. Plus two armor. A moment behind. Two factories now for Moru. Pumping out a tank and two mines as well as, as, well as drilling claws. Which is clearly going to be very helpful. Lurker, Den, and Hive on the way for Solar. Who is absorbing the hits for now. Maru has established his fourth base, though. In fact, he has arguably too many SCVs. 83 and counting. He's still building them. Yeah, 85 SCVs. As well as 2-2. Hasn't started the 3-3 yet. The only thing missing from the production tab right now. Drilling Claws is done. Making the Widow Mines that much more of a menace. Creep. Not enough help here. The Banelings... Chasing down the Marines. We don't mind. Oh, well. Yeah, sure, he kills the Marines, but. Uh, Widowmind's got some juicy Zergling hits. 46 down in that last fight. 16 Marines. Maru blunting the potential counterattack. As any extraneous Zerglings are usually what you send out. While you're building up at home. A good defense is a great offense. That's as the saying goes, if you were interpreting it slightly differently. As right now, Maru is keeping Solar off his back by staying on Solar's. Yeah, small counterattack from Solar, trying to get something out there. The Lurkers are going to force... Well, Ghosts are already in production. Maru just dancing around the Lurker spines. Didn't really lose anything there as he just maneuvered back and forth. 
targeting down a lurker gets it. That doesn't feel very fair, does it? <laughs> God, Maru. It's like, come at me when you have like 12 lurkers. This is, this is just easy mode. SCVs. Oh, even a small, you see, even a small counterattack here. Dragging Maru off the map. Dragging his units back. Even gonna kill a ghost or two. Three ghosts. This is just like 20 Zerglings. It shows how valuable even a tiny counterattack can be. Even Maru vulnerable, because especially if he's maxed out, he doesn't have units coming out of his barracks. So that's what a counterattack can be even more effective, because you just don't have the reinforcements. Three more command centers on the way. Drilling claws drop here. Oh, so annoying. Little mines dragging the entire Zerg army back, but very satisfyingly knocking down the medevac with the Widow mines inside. So, so we're gonna feel much better after that, at least for a few seconds, until the next drop comes in. Lurkers. Hey, get a couple kills, but get chased down by the Marines here. Oh god. Infantry weapons level 3 completing. What? That's just plus one ranged attack for Solar. Who's been, for good reason, more focused on the melee, but... 3-3 three, three is done. He's completed his upgrades, has Mario. Adaptive Talon's about to complete. The uh, Lurker Speed and Speed Burrow. Five command centers. The ultimate late game. Get to the point where you can throw away SCVs and have essentially unlimited map hacks. I mean scan. We're, I think we're at double digit CCs already and quickly moving up in the number. EMP lands on the Viper. The bio ball stands its ground. Marines file behind the Marauders. But here comes Solar from the high ground. Not enough. The Badlings are gunned down before they can get close. And Maru's army, the Marauders, seem like they've been stripped out. But the the juicy center, the ghosts, and the Marines is still very much intact and angry as it moves towards a counter. Wow. It, just, it seems like just Marauders died there. Wow. Oh my god. In that fight, Maru was four times more cost effective. He lost eight Marauders and two Mines. He's snipe- Okay, that- that's a questionable idea, but he gets Cloak. God, those ghosts. He's sniping Bane. He's just doing whatever he can. And Banelings aren't particularly- uh, As ghosts are not light units. They're not heavy either. They're just right. Okay, just like their mama told them growing up. So, if you split, it's actually less efficient for Banelings to kill ghosts one-on-one. -on -one. It takes five Banelings usually about, which is more costly than the ghost itself. Of course, if you don't kill the ghost and it gets healed, well, that's, uh, stonks right there. Solar? He has minerals in the bank, but we're quickly reaching that late-game state where... Zerg players have a tendency to struggle, and it does not bode well for Solar that the fights he's been taking with an advantage, at least before the last few minutes, were not going particularly great. He started off really well, but mostly because Maru kind of gave away some units. Now it seems like Maru's uh, warmed up and tooled up. His army is Ghost, Tank, Liberator, with uh, a handful of Marines and Marauders scattered in still. Bunch of lurkers. High sec auto tracking is now done. Full energy viper here gets a blinding cloud, but that doesn't stop the snipes. The planetary is not dying. The planetary does not die, but most of Solar's attacking army does. He has to get through a few command centers. The orbital actually lifts at the last second. 22 SCVs went down. But in that fu oh my god. Um, Maru destroying. Over twice as many minerals and three times as much gas. I don't think that that's a trend that's going to continue. There is no change in the unit compositions. Maru is adding more and more 
uh, upgrades for his mech, Ghost. He's, he's filling in the more powerful units, whereas Solar keeps making the same thing. That doesn't mean Solar can't win a fight here. It just means he has to get, well, that certainly isn't going to help. The lurkers are all sniped out, left alone on the high ground. It's becoming more one-sided than a Mobius strip at the moment, as Maru just keeps finding fights that are more like bullying than they are like a back-and-forth engagement. The Marauders and the tanks are tanking. You may have heard some ghosts die there, but I have a feeling that overall... Three ghosts, six Marauders, but 40 Banelings... More snipes. Even for auto-attacking, the ghosts aren't bad. The tanks are actually adding a lot of damage against the ghosts. You gotta be careful there aren't too many tanks, otherwise you're gonna kill your own ghosts. The Marauders forming a, a bio wall there. A meat shield. A bio wall? I don't know. There's a name for it. A nuke is in the production tab. Mario's supply is dipping. Though his army supply is still staying quite high here. The ghost count is thinning out. He could be overstaying his welcome. What does the income look like? Yeah, Solar taking quite an advantage here. As he's holding onto these bases, and Maru hasn't actually dealt with any of the bases directly in a while. The ghosts. Well, the problem is Solar. The medevac, as the, as the numbers get lower on both sides, the medevacs start kicking in more and more. Oh, come on. He's there, Maru. Well, he cancels it. Maru. It's because it's Solar, isn't it, Maru? That's a taunt against Solar right there. Knowing his history. That, that nuke was unnecessary. It was clearly trending towards Maru. He knew it wasn't gonna land, but he did it anyways. Oh my. And Maru off to a 2-0 lit. Oh my. That is rough. <sighs> Neither game. And that was a great start. Solar got a good jump on it. Maru slipped a lot and didn't find a lot of space at all from the Reapers. The Reapers are supposed to give you map control and potentially an economic advantage where you keep that Zerg all bottled up. But he did not accomplish that. In fact, his follow-up, which was the Hellion Drop, got crushed. So Solar had everything going for him. But here we are. 2-0. Don't do it again. Don't stop it. No respect. No respect at all. I'm not surprised. I'm not even disappointed. I'm, uh... Come up with a word. Edit this part out, Jimmy. I have a great word. I'm nonplussed. Wait, he's building them. He's even on the wrong side of the map. He's building them with, with the add-ons in mind. This might not even be Reapers. I don't think, like, if he goes just Tech Lab Reactor, this is a Wings of Liberty build. Back when we could build a bunch of Marine Marauder and stim up a ramp, and that was like a real pro gamer strategy. I remember the days of, will the Protoss force field his main base in time, or will I win the game? And that being a GSL level strat. I'm not talking about his natural, I'm talking about the main. One base versus one base. Times have changed. Though I think Maru did that strat back in the day. Occasionally as well. Yeah, why not? Like, he may be a free win. So, we'll be Reapers to start. Solar. 
once again. Gonna be taking the third. Does he do just a big counterattack? I feel like a Roach Warren would not be out of place here. Clearly, I, Maru will expect it, but that doesn't necessarily make it less effective. You gotta do something. It's not working. Whatever Solar's doing, it is not working. God, Reapers are so annoying. Even as Terran, all right? I'm one third Terran myself. Some of my best friends are Terran, so, like, I understand. Reapers are just, they're up there with essentially all of the other Terran units, but Reapers are, are near the top. Widow Mines, I think, at the top. Then Liberators and Ghosts, and then Reapers. Then Medivax, and then, uh, <laughs> then Battle Cruisers. And not that we're making a tier list, but if I was to, we just we just keep going for a while. I think we get to see exactly what Mario wanted last game too. Uh, he's got the stim on the way. There is no counterattack, no uh, zergling sniping off the add-ons. Zergling speed is done, but solar. I. <laughs> Is it worth it to go for the Reapers? This time is actually, I think, a much quicker third command center for Mara. Um, three Reapers. Was it enough of a response? He's just going to bust him. All right. It's busting time. Jimmy! One moment. Thank you, Solar, for finally following your heart and understanding that something in this series needs to change. Okay, you cannot let Maru just do whatever he wants. He can't keep getting away with it. It's time to stop. Maru, you can't, yeah, he can't just walk across the map like this. He cannot be allowed to do this. He can't just do whatever build he wants. And then eventually get to the late game and outplay you. It's just Marines. They're going to have stim. How many Bane Lanes is this? I mean, that is a lot of Marines. There's no bunker. He has no idea this is coming. Yeah, he doesn't see it until this moment. And the Zerglings are going to get in. And with them, the Banes. He can block the ramp potentially. There is no ramp on the high ground. Maru stutter stepping back, trying to hold. He's got the Threepers here. Stims again. The Bane Lane count is dwindling. Maru is still holding. He's lost 10 SCVs, but he can afford to lose some. The depot was still open. A bit of a mistake there as he's microing his heart out. The fact that Maru is not dead already is disgusting, but also impressive. A dozen SCVs. He's still going. Mules are dropping, confident, or at least acknowledging that there's nothing else to be done. Like, he, he just has to hold this. But how many units are... He has no units. It's just SCVs. Two Marines pop out. Can he get a depot? He doesn't have the money. He's building two medivacs, but for who? He can't, he, he needs a depot. Of all things, a tank pops out. Maru the tank! He tries to save, he does save it, for now. Meanwhile, at the natural, more banelings, more ba he, he negates the banelings, but they bust through and denies combat shield. Still, at the natural, the zerglings are streaming in. Maru is still fighting. He has less SCVs than he started with. I... 42 SCVs dead. And Maru's still in the game. He has three command centers. As we've said many times in the past, as long as you have three orbitals, the game is never over. Though this is really stretching that definition. And now Maru's going to counterattack with all his Marines. All four of them. Uh, well, Solar, not going to stop here. Oh my god. Well, Maru retreats to the high ground, reinforces the barricade. Uh... Well, three Marines on the low ground. A few to back them up. Trying to draw some fire. He has the Metavax. Solar is overrunning everything. Even though Maru has almost nothing, somehow, that bare bone shoestring, whatever's left, 
is still making Solar work for it. Solar's making eight more drones, which I think at this point is the correct call. Is there is a small chance that Maru lives, and you don't want to be caught with only Zergling Baneling if he manages to get any more Marines. How is he not dead yet? I, these three Marines... I think this is a matter of principle. Like, this is this is Maru playing the full series. I think... I doubt Maru thinks he's gonna come back and win this one. But the fact he's doing this much... with nothing... This is nothing. Like, he, he was at seven SCVs? I don't... He's killed a hundred Zerglings with 20 Marines and Threepers. And of course, he's lost 45 SCVs, but... Why won't you die? Uh, trying to re-land here. Solar is at 56 drones. You can't lift a building building. That's quite a sentence, but he, he abandoned the high ground. Force back again. Target fire, but the medevacs have no energy. The marines have no HP. That He's got two... Come on, Oh, my God. Never surrender! We will fight them at the ramp. We will fight them at the natural. We will fight them in the main. While our buildings will lift and can lift. We will never surrender. <laughs> well, unfortunately, the Zerg don't care about your moral victory. Solar finally attains an actual victory and puts himself on the board. God, if I'm Solar, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> I bet. I bet, knowing Maru, Maru was probably smirking the entire- like, from the time he saw the first Banelings. Maru's out there smirking. You know Maru. <laughs> Just amused. Look at what they must do to mimic a fraction of our power. He got a game, but... Yeah, possibly the least inspiring game for Solar to win. And Maru really did a number on him, even though he was so far ahead. <laughs> he just wouldn't die. Well, I'm very surprised Maru is not proxy rexing. Oh. He's doing a actual build here. Not not a weird like two rex triple CC. He's back to the one rex expand. Saying, alright, I'm gonna take it seriously now. I was just joking. It was just a prank, okay? Reapers aren't a thing. Look how beyond turned out. Well, Ancient Cistern. Large. That is what I think of when I think of Ancient Cistern. It's a very large map. Um, more map filler commentary. Well, did you know that throughout StarCraft history, um, we've had many maps? <laughs> Keep it going. Um, and we used to have four-player maps. But, unfortunately... That allowed um, Protoss players to win occasionally. So we, we cut those out. Actually, no, it, it screwed Protoss the most. The reason we don't have the four and, and even three player maps anymore is very simply in Legacy of the Void. If you don't scout in a certain amount of time, um, especially as Protoss against Zerg, but also against Terran, all the races, but specifically because of how Protoss has to set up the early buildings, then you can just lose the game. 
Like, like outright. There's a one in three or one in two chance you, you can just lose the game. And we don't like our RNG in StarCraft. Okay, it's not a game of gambling. Except when there are two Protoss, but... Uh, I mean, there's no helping that at the end of the day, so... Uh, for those wondering where all the four and three player maps went out, essentially the, the consensus is they're just not competitive. They're not, um, there's just too much potential for the game to be won or lost based on effectively RNG. Now, as a viewer and as a spectator and as someone who's uh career and livelihood depends on your likes and subscribes as well as interesting content to earn them i do miss them i miss like this map pool is the uh it, it's the loco of map pools okay it's solid it's competent um and it doesn't offend anyone so uh we've got exactly what you expect and nothing more really uh here with the map pool they, they do look good, though, so. We got Hellion Viking. Right, another... I was like, did I miss anything? Nope. No, what are you doing? No, no, don't go. Who's observing? Oh, my God. Maru runs in with the Hellions, gets four drones. Eh. Eh. Not great. I was gonna say not great, not terrible, but not great. That that was not much to get for four Hellions and a Reaper. I think he was gambling. Wow, Maru with the ultimate mind game here. Now that I lost all my Hellions, you'll never expect me to go Hellbats. You know what? I think he's right. Like, who would expect that? But he's actually going mech behind it. What a mind game that is. It doesn't, on paper, really make much sense at all, but I think Solar's going to be thrown off for sure here. Like, he's likely expecting a Widowmine drop? And there are Widowmines in production, but these are just Hellions as well. No Roach Warren on the way. Who is observing this? Oh my god. Four drones. That seems to be the number. Um. That it's just not doing it, right? That's so many Hellions lost. He's lost now seven Hellions for eight drones. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster. The saving grace here, or at least the um. The fallback is the is the fact that Solar clearly didn't expect mech. I think he's starting to suspect it now, based on the follow-up Hellions, uh, and the fact... Oh, no. He didn't see any other factories. What? No! What is this? What is this bio-curious uh, flex Terran? No, you can't just go two-factory whittle my Maru! No. 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 Stop. Stop him. Stop. Pause the game. Somebody. You can't just do whatever you want. And call it a build. Well, here come the drilling cause drops. This is a build that occasionally we'll see in uh, Terran vs. Protoss. I don't think I've seen this against Zerg in quite a bit. Especially in the fashion Maru's gone about it. There's a Spire on the way, which I think is going to be less than ideal. Oh, no, he's not going to expect the drilling claws. Oh, my God, they burrow so fast. Oh, no. Oh, God. Well, that is a disaster. And 16. And he gets them out. There's a nut. It's a revolving door. Oh, no. Not again. Is there, like, a Liberator in the main? No, that I got. But wait, there's more! Oh, my God. One of them didn't get the memo. Another mine. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Uh, well, here we are. Well. Uh, 
Now what? Uh... Solar's got to go all in. He's down 20 workers. So that more than made up. Why do you even bother with the Hellions? The Hellions were a false flag, okay? Like, I'm... I'm I, he was distracting him from the fact the real damage comes from Widow Mines, which we could have told you. So, Stim is done. No combat shield, but the boys can be pulled, and they will be pulled. Solar has to do critical damage here. Hmm. Corrosive Bow is actually landing onto the Marines. The Zergling closing the distance. High ground tank. Oh, he didn't land them all. Oh, no. Well. He looked okay for a second, but Maru can afford to lose half his SCVs and he'll still be ahead. Wow. This. As he, he smoothly maneuvered in and out of Mech Terran, he encouraged Solar to go roaches. And now has plenty to deal with those roaches. And Solar doesn't have the economy to switch his tech. He lost way too much to the mines. He's lost 38 drones this game. And remember, only 8 were from the Hellions. <laughs> the tank. Oh, come on, Maru. Didn't even look like it was done with the animation. No, no, Solar's given up. This is, uh, I've got my head in my hands. I've eight moved the rest of my army across the map situation. Oh. Bad news, Solar. GGWP. Take Trofoy instead of me. Oh. Well. Maru comes in swinging in game four after the Bane bust. Solar, giving him some respect. But at the end of the day, Maru showing why he's the best. Rank 1 Terran. So we're not able to compete. A decisive victory for Maru. Well, hopefully you enjoyed. If you check out this video, not them. Jimmy put one up just for you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've been enjoying my commentary. I am Katowice 2023, the World Championships. Anything you haven't seen yet you want to see, make sure to recommend it. I definitely read for those. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck. Have fun. Stay tuned.